If you have a 1936 Buffalo nickel, or really any Buffalo nickel, you can look for these types of errors that can give these coins some value. This first coin here is a 1936 Buffalo nickel that has been broad struck. So you'll see that around the rim of the coin, and it's graded by Annex at a mint state 62. The coin grading scale goes up to 70. This is at a 62. The coin ended up selling for $159. Moving right along to a, another Buffalo nickel from 1936 graded by PCGS this time at a 64 grade and it does have a clipped planchet and a partial collar. So you can see that clip down there very faintly, you know, it's a really small clip down there by the date and then you'll see it here on the reverse of the coin as well. Uh, so, you know, it's a $176 coin here. For me, clipped errors, not really uh, desirable for me, but to some collectors, they are. Now, in 1936, you want to look for the buffalo with the three and a half legs. So you'll see the two back legs there, very uh, visible. And then you'll see this uh, front left leg, and then you'll see the front right leg is about half of the leg showing there. So that is the three and a half leg. Now, even in this condition, which is not a very good condition coin, this is probably what most of our Buffalo nickels look like. And uh, it is the D mint mark as well. So you'll see the D mint mark on the reverse of the coin at the bottom under the words, five cents. That's where the mint mark will be if you do have one. But this three and a half legs is what gives the coin all of its value. So even in this condition, the coin still sold for nearly $400. Now, if this coin was a high mint state grade, you were talking thousands and thousands of dollars. And again, here's an example of that uh, half of a leg there on the Buffalo. Now, let's move on to the 1936 D mint mark. It does not have any type of mint errors. This this coin sold for over $32,000 at auction, all because of one reason. The reason is its condition, its grade of a Mint State 68. So that is where all the value is at for this coin, is the fact that it is graded at an extremely high grade, meaning it is in phenomenal condition. Again, a 70 is a perfectly graded coin. This is at a 68. There's probably, this might be the only one from 1936 with the D met mark that is graded at a 68 grade for the Buffalo nickel. So it really depends on grade population, supply and demand, how many of these exist at this grade. If there's only one or two that are graded at this grade, then that is what increases the value, $32,000. Now here is a 1936 Buffalo nickel, not in very good condition at all. It does have a over mint mark though, which is really cool uh, and something to look for on your coins as well. So on this coin, we have a D over an S mint mark. So it's important to inspect your coins closely with your coin microscopes. By the way, I have all kinds of coin deals, coin microscopes, all that stuff available at the link in the comments below or in the description of this video. Solo, S-O-L-O dot T-O slash couch collectibles. Hit that link, go get you some coin deals. All right, this coin sold for $56, even in this condition because of the D over the S mint mark. Now we also have an RPM, which is a repunched mint mark. So on this example of the Buffalo nickel, we have a repunched D mint mark. So here's a couple different examples of a repunched D mint mark on a 1936 Buffalo nickel. There are quite a few different examples to look for. So make sure again, you inspect your coins very, very closely. Now this coin, because it has that RPM, that repunched D mint mark, and the coin does have a very nice grade of a 66, meaning it's in pretty good condition. This coin ended up selling for $840 at auction. Here's one of my favorite types of mint errors uh, that you could possibly find or look for or just purchase or buy, something like this. I mean, this coin is over a $4,000 coin because it has been double struck and that design is flipped over. So you'll see the reverse design here with the obverse. And then as we flip the coin over, again, you'll see the obverse on the reverse of the coin as well. So super rare double struck.
strike to have and to have it in this condition over a four thousand dollar coin there now this is a much more obvious type of double strike uh, so you can see that there at the top of the coin very obvious you know obviously you're not just like stumbling upon a coin like this one day right so, you know this coin did end up selling for over four thousand dollars as well graded by ngc at an AU58. This next coin is graded at an AU58 as well, this time by PCGS, and it does have a doubled die obverse. So on all of your 1936 Buffalo nickels, you also want to look for doubling on the front of the coin or the obverse of the coin. You wanna look for that on the date, on the lettering of the coin. So feel free to get you a coin microscope at the link below in the comments. That way you guys can inspect these coins for double dies, repunch mint marks, over mint marks, and errors uh, that can give your coins value. This coin sold for over $155. Next up is a doubled die reverse. So you can look for doubling on the back of the coin or the reverse of the Buffalo nickel as well. Now this coin only sold for $26, but it is in pretty poor condition. It's only graded at a 12 by Annex. So really depends on the condition of the coin and you know who grades the coin, the demand, and all those things can uh, you know kind of affect the value of a coin sale. Now here is a 1936 Buffalo nickel that also has a double die reverse, uh, but it is graded by PCGS at a 15 as opposed to a 12 by Annex. And this coin sold for $129. So, you know, about $100 more for that doubled die. And of course, uh, you could look for that doubling on the lettering of the coin on the reverse of the coin there. Now here is another mint error taking place on a 1936 Buffalo nickel. It does have a pretty large indent there on the reverse. And then you also see a partial collar as well around the rim of the coin. This nickel ended up selling for $372. And then we also have the 1936 Buffalo nickel that does not have a mint mark. So it's the no mint mark nickel that sold for over $7,000 at auction, all because of its high grade of a 68. So NGC graded this coin at a 68. Super rare to have this coin in this condition. That's why it sold for over $7,000. I mean, if you just have a regular Buffalo nickel in horrible condition, it doesn't have any types of errors. It's not really worth that much. Now here is another indent error taking place on the Buffalo nickel. This coin ended up selling for $575. Graded by PCGS. I think that error kind of speaks for itself. And here is a lamination taking place on a 1936 Buffalo nickel graded by Annex at a 12. And you can see that they're going through the obverse of the coin. Very obvious. You can look for laminations on all kinds of different coins, not just Buffalo nickels. This coin ended up selling for $129. Not too bad for a coin in that condition. But let's move on here to a Buffalo nickel that was struck off center. This coin ended up selling for $384 at auction, graded by NGC. Obviously, an off center error, again, speaks for itself. Don't really uh, you know, need to inspect a coin like that. You can see it very visibly with uh, you know, your, your regular vision. All right, so here is a 1936 S Mint Mark Buffalo Nickel. You'll see that most of the design of the coin is being cut off and that will make the coin extremely valuable. This coin sold for nearly $10,000 at auction because it is a Buffalo nickel design that was actually struck onto a silver dime planchet. So that's why all the design of the nickel does not fit on there because it's a dime planchet, which is much smaller than a Buffalo nickel planchet, right? Uh, so this coin ended up selling, like I say, for over $9,700 graded by PCGS. Now here is a similar type of error. Instead of being struck onto a dime planchet, we have a Buffalo nickel design that was struck onto a one cent planchet. Uh, in 1936, of course, they were making wheat pennies. So that would be a wheat penny planchet uh, that this design was struck onto. Uh, this coin ended up selling for about $3,300. So man, over a $3,000 coin there because of that error. Now we also do have a proof example of the 1936 Buffalo nickel uh, graded by PCGS at a 68. I mean, to have this coin and to have it in this condition is uh, unbelievably rare. So that's why the coin ended up selling for $21,000. 
Now keep in mind, in 1936, we also have the estimate mark. So as we zoom in on the reverse, again, under the words five cents, you'll see that estimate mark there. Uh, that is a San Francisco minted Buffalo nickel. So this coin ended up selling for over $5,000, all because of its high grade of a mint state 67 plus by PCGS. So all the value on that coin is in the condition or the grade. Now, we looked at a repunched mint mark on the D mint mark. You also want to look for an RPM, a repunched mint mark for the S mint mark. So here are some examples of that. Very, very obvious uh, RPMs there that you could look for on your 1936 Buffalo Nichols with the S mint mark. Now this coin ended up selling for over $1,000 because the S mint mark has been repunched and because it is graded at a 66, meaning the coin is in good condition. So, $1,000 nickel there. This next coin here sold for over $740 at auction, even in this condition, graded at a VF30. You know, you would not think much about it, but boy, as we zoom in there on the obverse of the coin, I mean, you could see that staple embedded into the coin there. So that is actually a very, very rare mint error for something like this to happen. You know, a piece of staple got struck into the coin and man, look at how aligned it is like with the jawline. I mean, that's uh, pretty incredible. It could have just been like a straight staple like going through the hair, the cheeks or whatever. And it still would have been a cool error, but the fact that it, is kind of like going with the jawline, I feel like is uh, much more interesting. So that is a very rare coin, $747. Next up is a 1936 Buffalo nickel that has been struck through Greece. This coin sold for around $80. And as we zoom in there, you'll see where that strike through is taking place. You'll see that the C and E of the word sense is uh, faded out as a result of the coin being struck through Greece. The coin is graded by Annex, and it's around an $80 nickel there. So always inspect your coins. You never know what you may find out there. And don't forget to check out the rest of the videos here on the channel. Hey guys, everyone's asking how they can get my free coin book. Well, here's how you do it. You hit the link in the comments. It takes you over here to Whatnot. You'll see my Whatnot page. Got 5,000 followers over there. You click on Shop right here on the left side. And you scroll down. And you can add the book. You go Buy It Now. You enter your payment and your address information. And then you make sure that $15 credit applies for your purchase. That way you get the book for free. Zero dollars. All right, now you have to use my invite link to sign up. If you guys download the app and sign up, it's not going to work. You have to use the link in the comments. That way you guys can get the book absolutely free. By the way, we are on Whatnot every Tuesday and Thursday doing free giveaways, all kinds of cool stuff over there. We're selling an enormous amount of penny rolls, wheat penny rolls, silver coins, gold coins, everything. Make sure you guys follow. You do not want to miss out on these giveaways. Thank you